the Falco family where homeschool is life and having a teachable spirit is our number one goal. Today I am gonna share with you what I'm using for curriculum for my fourth grader. Um, I am doing these, I'm gonna repeat myself because this is a separate video and you probably, you may or may not have seen my video on curriculum for my kindergartner, so just bear with me. I am doing these curriculum videos because I realized I did not do them when we started off the year. The reason I didn't is because a lot of what we're using is the same stuff. We're using a lot of the same things that I already have. Um, I really work very hard on bringing in kind of like legacy curriculum and resources into our homeschool so that we can use it over and over and over again. And so uh, because I don't have way too many things that are new and different, I just didn't do a curriculum video. But I realized that maybe that was a mistake and um, there's no better time, better late than never, to go ahead and just let you know what we're using for curriculum. Um, so for my fourth grader, I am going to do separate videos that outline what I'm using completely for science and geography um, and history, that type of thing. But um, I thought I would just lay out what I'm using specific to him all together um, to kind of show you what we're working our way through. So I'm going to go ahead and start with language arts. Now bear with me, okay? <laughs> you guys already know that I do things very different around here, but it works for us. So if you have any questions, just let me know, but this is how we do things. Um, I love the Good and the Beautiful as a spine curriculum in our homeschool life, okay? How we use them in language arts um, is a little different, and it's because I teach both of my boys together, my second grader and my fourth grader. They both have separate sets of strengths and weaknesses that lend themselves to one another's learning very nicely and so we do them together in order for me to do it together um i need to have different things that i can pull from to make it work well and so i do that so i'm going to show you what we're using <laughs> so now we've already worked our way through the language arts and literature level three course i really like this particular course um i like this one it includes a ton more um grammar and yeah, I just really like this one, so we're working our way through it again. We are also doing level four. Now, so far, level four is not my absolute favorite. Um, the reason is because it's very literature heavy. And while that is amazing, if this is your standalone curriculum for us, um, this is our book year. We read quite a bit outside of curriculum. So to have a level that is so literature heavy makes it kind of difficult for us to fit all of our reading in. Um, so it doesn't mean I don't like it. It's just that, you know, I don't prefer it as far as the way we teach and what works best for us. But it is very beneficial. I still work through um, a lot of the bits and pieces. I still very much so love um, a lot of the things that they have you do inside of this level. So we will continue to work our way through this level. It'll just be at a slightly slower pace and we will skip a few things here and there because of how heavy it is on the literature. Now, with that being said, Along with a lot of the grammar and vocabulary and things like that that I really love um, that's included in the level three of the curriculum, I think they jump back into that but in a higher, mm, on a higher scale in level five. So I also have level five as their stretch material. Um, so they go into com um, subordinating conjunctions in here and dependent clauses and things like that. There's a lot more writing in here. Um, well, maybe I shouldn't say a lot more writing because I'm not exactly sure because I haven't made my way completely through level four, but I just, it's just, just been working out really well for me to use and jump between all three of the levels. So that's what I do. It works really well for us. Um, yeah, so we do from level three, level four, and level five in the language arts and literature of the good and the beautiful as our spine for language arts. 
Okay, next up is math. So the two programs that I use a lot for math practice, we go between Splash Math for the fourth and fifth grade and IXL for the fourth grade. Um, in addition to that, I have these printables from One Stop Teacher Shop on Teachers Paid Teachers that we work our way through. It's kind of like morning work, but it helps us give a more comprehensive um, practice and worksheet form for math in our days. So we work our way through this as well. And then I also use this, you guys. Um, everything you need to ace math in one big fat notebook. The way we're using this right now is not necessarily to go through and answer the questions and things, but like I've said before about these books, this particular resource is that they're great for reading through. So while he may not completely understand it and we may not do a lot of practice in it, I think it has been very um, beneficial to just getting his mind going um, when it comes to math concepts and things for him to read through um, this book little bits at a time so that is what we're doing for math and then also the everything you need to ace English language arts in one big fat notebook I love these I can't say any more about them I really like that they can read them like a book I like how they have little doodles and highlights and things like that so we use this book as it applies as well for history same thing we're using the everything you need to ace world history and American history at this point um, we just use them as their curiosity sparks little things here and there and pick the part of the resource, the page of the resource that applies and we go with it. That's how we use them. We're not working them from cover to cover. I just think it's great to have them at least introduce themselves to the different concepts and things so that when we actually do get to doing a more comprehensive study of a specific thing, they would have already been um, familiar with it. What we're using for our spine is the Good and the Beautiful's History Year One. For our culinary unit, he has this Kid Chef Every Day, the Easy Cookbook for Foodie Kids. Um, he got this for Christmas and we're gonna be using that to work our way through a little culinary unit. And this is his book. And then for geography, I like to have a little something that's specific to them as we work our way through geography. Our spine for geography is still the good and the beautiful. How I do that is they incorporate geography into their language arts programs. And so I pull the geography bits and pieces out and use them as a little spine for geography um, along with just our natural curiosities as far as geography is concerned. This is a really easy one to do naturally because as you learn about other things, um, people in science, people in history, um, different places are just so easy to come by. Really just taking a moment to uncover where is this person, where was this person born, where was this person from. Um, for example, when we read through Malala's, Malala's Magic Pencil, well where is she from? Pakistan. Let's find Pakistan, you know? And so that's a really easy little segue into ge geography bits and pieces and as they start to connect those dots, I feel like geography kind of builds its itself. Um, so we use the Good and the Beautiful's geography bits and pieces as a somewhat of a spine and then we use our other resources like our 50 states book, world book, and then he has an ultimate coloring book for the world wonders and I'll show you. So he has this book, the ultimate coloring book wonderful world color the wonders of the world so as we talk about different places if there's somewhere in here that applies he will go ahead and use some watercolor or markers or whatever he wants to do and color in those spaces while we look them up on the internet or ask siri or <laughs> ask alexa we don't have alexa but if we had alexa we'd ask her so um yeah, that's how we do things for geography. So for Bible for Cameron, we basically just got him a new Bible. So he has the investigator's Bible that he can add to the mix of his Bible studies. And then he also has the plans I have for you journal, which if you guys have been following me for any amount of time, then you know that we've been working on this for quite some time now. That's okay. <laughs> as long as we make our way through it, it's good. And I refuse to get anything 
else until we work through these things first. So he has the plans I have for you journal and that is what he's going to work his way through for a Bible. So now let's move on to science. So science is a big deal for my fourth grader. He loves it. So um, I have quite a few things. I have quite a few things that are specific to him for science. Um, we still work through our unit studies and things together. Um, but there are some things that are just for him to work through in his little science world this year. Um, so one thing we're using, this is not a surprise, that everything you need to ace science in one big fat notebook. Um, the reason why I lay it out as something specific to him is that it, they're using it like a book. Um, so he's going to read through some things as they apply based on what we uncover in the other things that he's doing in science. All right, so the next thing that is specific to him is the beginning chemistry unit for the good and the beautiful. Um, the other kids will not be doing this. Of course, if they come along and see what he's doing and they're interested, I'm not going to turn them away. But this is something he is going to kind of be working through slowly on his own um, the beginning chemistry and the scientific method. The next thing that is specific to him, um, the other kids, again, will be working their way through it if they want to. But this is something that he is going to work on completing himself. He's going to be working through the Wild Explorers Club. Then we have Discovery Kids. You guys know I like the Discovery Kids. We have the smaller books for my daughter. And now we have the slightly bigger books for my son. So I have one for our world, animals, and outer space. I love using these resource books as, um, you know, curriculum. So he's got these that he's going to be working his way through. Then he also has these. Iggy Peck's Big Project Book for Amazing Architects. Rosie Revere's Big Project Book for Engineers. And Ada Twist's Big Project Book for Stellar Scientists. So we probably definitely won't work our way through each one of them completely for the year. But um, he's just going to work through all three as they apply. So... <laughs> And I think that's it, you guys. Yes, I think that's it for my fourth grader. That is what he's going to be working his way through um, for the rest of this year. And then, as you can see, it was quite a bit of stuff. And they're quite, those resources are pretty packed. And we work our way slowly through things. So a lot of this stuff will be in the next curriculum video <laughs> for next year. Um, I like that. Uh, it might not be the most exciting thing to share here on YouTube, but I think it has been wise um, to build up resources in this manner. And it's been very um, conducive to creating that learning environment and pace of learning that I want in our homeschool and for my kids. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Make sure you're subscribed and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!